Hey you guys, we are going to go ahead and get part three started by editing this um, image that I showed you guys how I shot in part two. So if you'd like to see how um, I shot this image, just go ahead and go to part two. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. I've already done um, facial retouching um, on Landry and uh, to get that out of the way. So you can see that I haven't touched anything. I have like um, price tags over here on flowers. And I'm gonna show you actually, do you see how there's gaps right here? I didn't have any more ivy to bump up as filler. I stuck it over here. So I'm gonna show you guys an alternative way to fill this in above this ivy. So first you go over here to your quick select tool make sure it's the plus at the top that means you are telling it what you want to uh, select instead of what you want to take away which would be the negative so you can use the bracket keys um, as to quickly uh, make this selection larger or smaller so what i'm just going to do here is i'm just going to crudely select these flowers now i do want to add that little ivy right there so that needs to be added I'm gonna like I said crudely and here I am like fine-tuning it that's okay though okay that looks pretty good I'm actually gonna go ahead and add this little flower guy right here okay so once you have it crudely selected you're going to command J but or duplicate so when I do command J what that does is it puts my selection on a new layer right here which is layer one so if I choose my select tool you can see that it automatically selects it but I can move it around so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger and I'm gonna kind of and all I'm wanting to do is basically close in this gap right here okay so I like I like where that is. So once you have that kind of where you want, you're going to clean it up. So what you're going to do is select your layer and you're going to come down here to the bottom and you're going to add a mask. So what that mask is going to do is it's going to allow you to edit this layer of greenery that we just selected and duplicated. So then I'm going to choose a brush and I'm going to choose a brush color that is the opposite of the layer mask, which would be black. So what that's going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me to take away from this layer so what I usually do is I'll just go ahead I kind of like where this is and I don't mind where this is just to break it up a little bit I might get rid of that there we go so I'm gonna flip it back to white so that I can quickly fill in these areas now this right here what I can do is I can select my original bush or layer and then I can go to filter and I can go to Gaussian blur now I don't want to blur it very much because you can see if you blur it quite a bit it looks like that so I'm gonna go to about yeah right there I like that I like that so I'm gonna go back to this layer because this this purple flower is bothering me and I'm kind of going back and forth because I know that the edges of that flower aren't straight and I'm just trying to soften this flower you can see the edges of it and then if you wanted to you could just completely I don't want to get rid of that tulip I like the tulip there we go I'm gonna get in there okay now I'm gonna delete it or hide it so that you can see before and after as you can see it just perfectly covers up that hole so I'm gonna go ahead and layer and flatten image now I do not like this little hole right here so I'm using the patch tool and I'm just going to choose what I want and then just hit the delete key make sure that content aware is chosen and just hit OK and it's just going to do it for me. So there we go. Now I'm going to go over here on this other side because I have a few holes and <laughs> price tags. 
then I'm also going to select the patch tool and then delete. This right here where these stems are, I'm also just going to do the same thing. And this is a picture, this is an image that I haven't edited from this session, so I'm doing it blind right along with you guys. All right, I like how that looks. I'm liking it, I'm liking it. Okay, so what I do on most of my images is a base layer from Greater Than Gatsby Painterly Portrait Collection, the original one, like the very first one. So one of my most favorite is Campbell Soup Cans, and it is my favorite base layer. And so you can see that it just brightens everything up and warms it up. But I do know that the other actions that I'm going to use really warm it up too. So I'm going to go into Campbell Soup Cans. So you do that by clicking this little arrow right here. And then it opens these up. And then you can edit these layers. So I'm going to go ahead. I know that this is warm up the highlights. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that one off. And you can see, I'll do it again so you can see. Now it is pretty, but I'm going to add the ones that I'm going to add are going to add warmth. And I don't want that warmth added yet. Okay, so the first one I'm going to use, which is I've, I used this one on most all of these field backdrop images, is a Jessica Drossen action, and it's Jessica Drossen Illuminations Instant Overlays Volume 2. Volume 2. And this is really, I use this on almost every, I use overlays from this set in almost every photo. It is worth the money. I'm going to link it below and I'm going to play center stage and I'm going to show you what it does. See how it darkens, but then it makes it look like there's actual sun coming in. So sometimes it does darken the shadows a little bit too much. And when that happens, I simply choose this layer, this layer mask, and then I'm going to choose the brush that is the opposite color. And I'm going to make it larger with the bracket keys. And I'm going to go ahead and come in here and kind of mask it off. See how it brings back those shadows? Sometimes it'll brighten their face a little bit too much, this, this one. And so I'm cool with that. Yeah, I like that. So then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flatten that image. And then I'm going to run Flashlight Cool. And you'll see it kind of does something similar, but then it warms it up a little bit more. Like you can see how dark it made this though. But, oh, it's so pretty. So pretty. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do kind of what I did to the other one, but I'm going to bring it down to about 45% because I don't want these shadows to go completely black. Let me see about her face. I'm good with that. I'm good with that. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten that image. Now, another one that I used for these is from Painterly Portrait 2. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, they have some finishing tones that are just awesome. And they have one that's called Romantic Romanticism. And then in brackets, it says Pure Clean. And it's a good one, too. It just kind of bumps everything up and brightens it up just a little bit. It's real pretty. If you don't like your colors bold, this is probably not one you want to use. But you can just see that it pops everything. And I just love it. I just love it. Okay, so then... Okay, so Greater Than Gatsby came out with some more that is called Joy of Light. And then there's a light and airy that just has the most amazing vignettes on it. And then it has gradient hazes, like I'll show you what I'm talking about. So the lavender fields, <laughs> lavender fields haze looks like this, and it just adds a little bit of haze at the bottom, and I love it. Just a little bit right there. It's like perfect. So then sometimes if I look at my highlights and they're not bright enough for me, I will do Command L, and it's going to um, bring up my levels, and you can bump it up or down. 
and sometimes I just bump it just a little bit and then I'm going to bring down right there in the shadows just a little bit because it's so pretty so pretty so then my other favorite is in the same collection to finish it is joy of light light and airy and there is a silky soften boost and it just sort of gives it a very slight painterly effect and I love it oh it's so pretty look and it says to mask off the hands, so I always go over to this and then always choose the opposite to mask off. And then I'll always mask off on the hands. And if it's a little bit too much for you, you can paint it off of certain places or not. So pretty, and then I'm going to flatten that. And we're done. So pretty, so pretty. I just love her. Isn't this image just beautiful? It's like a painting. So there's that one and it's that simple guys. Okay, so let's go ahead and edit one of the um, photos from the Daisy background. Um, this is Joelle, Jojo. And um, if you want to watch um, she, her, <laughs> if you want to watch me shoot her on the Daisy background, go to part two. <laughs> I can't talk today. Um, and I just realized that she has, she had some purple sliders on and looking at this image, I'm like, that looks kind of purple. So I could take the purple away, but let's see what happens if I select and delete. I'm good with that. Okay. So now that I have that done care of, um, you can see that pretty much straight out of camera, I really wouldn't need to do anything to this if I didn't want to. Um, I use a lot of actions because I just like using actions. I enjoy using actions. I think that it really makes my workflow a lot faster and it gives my images like a little pop that I like. So I'm going to go ahead and I know I always tell you guys so. If you really want to watch my batch editing, I have a batch editing video, um, how I do things fast, and I have a dream dress session folder of actions that I use on every time I edit, basically. And my number one that I use is Campbell's Soup Cans from Painterly Collection from Greater Than Gatsby, and that's the original Painterly Collection, worth every penny. The second one, too, like, I feel like it's worth all the money. So, as you can see, it just gives it a little pop. So sometimes I will take away when you um, pull down on this, you can see there's a um, warming, warm the highlights layer. And sometimes I'll take that off if I know that what actions I'm using after this are going to warm it up more, I go ahead and take that off. But I'm going to not use that many actions on this image because as you can see, it's pretty much perfect. Um, I'm going to go ahead and flatten that. If I wanted to um, add a little bit of a sun flare to this just to add a little bit of interest um, I plus and minus uh, command plus and minus to um, zoom it in and out quickly and with some of my favorite flares are from this greater than Gatsby joy of light collection there's two there's a golden glow and there's a light and airy and both of them have different uh, movable lights in them and this so some of them are warm and some of them are cool and some of them are neutral. Um, the, looking at this image, it looks like, you know, supposedly we shot this midday. And so you would not maybe want a warm one. You would maybe want a natural color one. And so I'll just show you what that looks like. So in the movable soft light now, specifically, I am in joy of light, light and airy. So I'm under movable soft light and I'm going to hit play. And you'll see that this tells you that, you know, what to do. And basically what it does is it puts this in the middle, but then you're going to use your move tool to move this wherever you want it to go. So let's say you already had the sun in the background. It is really fun to kind of put this over the sun and then adjust the opacity and then mask it off your subject. And I'll show you that in another video. But in this, in the background, the sun's not really coming from a specific way because I feel like it's probably overhead. And so I'm going to go with that. And we're going to pretend like the sun is kind of like up here. And once you get it where you want it to go, you just hit OK. And you can see it just kind of adds a little bit. And then you can adjust the opacity accordingly. I like just a little bit 
on edge. Now, if it was on her face, um, in my mind, if it's back here, it's not going to be on her face, but it might be around her hair. And so I would just go in and mask it off of her face. But I don't have to do that right now because it's really not on her face at all. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten that. Okay, so as a finishing little touch, Jessica Drossen has come out with these new Actions um, pastel tones, and I love them, and there's specifically two that I love. I love brighter contrast, and I love pop selected area contrast. So pop selected area contrast would be, let's say I just wanted to pop her face, and I didn't, and the rest of the image looked good to me, but I just wanted to bump her face up just a little bit. So I know it's an overkill at first, so if you bring it down and then just very slightly bring it up. Makes a big difference, right? So let's say I don't want to do that one and I want to brighten the whole image. There's another one that's called Brighter Contrast and you can see that it just adds like a little pop and you can even tone it down a little bit and bring it up and then in areas, let's say I wasn't comfortable with the highlights where it's kind of blown out her dress a little bit all I have to do is take my brush on this uh, mask and just mask it off of where I feel like it blows the highlights just a little bit. So see, just a little bit of a brightening. And that's literally, that's it. Like that's all I did to these images. Um, they were pretty good straight out of camera. Uh, might be kind of boring to watch that, I guess. But, you know, if you get your light, I mean, the goal is always as a photographer to get our light correct and the straight out of camera shot as perfect as we can to minimize the time you're behind the, you know, behind the computer because that's not where we make our money. Where we make our money is shooting, connecting with our clients and selling. And that's not what you're doing when you're behind the computer. You're just trying to get the image beautiful so that mom falls in love with it. And mom loved these images, total beach feel. And I love them and that's it. I know it's kind of simple, but y'all, I'm telling you, people try to complicate it, but it's pretty simple. So on to the next one.